Why do I love reading code? Well, two big reasons. One is you get to read and learn from other people's code. So one of the big things I did when I was starting out, uh, I, I didn't have a senior developer. I read a lot of code uh, and I read a lot of Rails, read a lot of mini tests, and that helped level me up as a developer because I got to read the code of very senior and very experienced Ruby and Rails developers. Uh, and you can learn a lot. You know, you can learn all kinds of things about the language, language features, how to do things in a more uh, uh, Rails or Ruby-like way. Um, so I've learned a lot from reading code. I think that's the primary reason I think more people should be doing it. The other reason is, is I find myself reading code more often than I find myself reading docs. Um, so documentation is trying to explain the code to you using usually the English language. And we have the code. So if we can just read it, it's kind of like the best documentation, you know, is, is the code itself. So I prefer reading code to docs and I'll, I'll fall back on the docs if I don't get it. But I kind of prefer reading the code itself. Uh, and I'll show some specific examples of when um, I wish people, more people would read code. Uh, so number one technique for reading code in, in uh, Ruby and Rails uh, is bundle open. So bundle open opens uh, the dependency uh, you're going to specify here. So I can say mini test. And this will slowly open Adam, because I'm recording things and it's slow right now. Uh, so I got mini test, and it's the actual version that's bundled in my gem file.lock. So if we cat gem file lock and prep for mini tests, you'll see that I'm loaded 5.12.2, which is the exact version that's opened here. Okay. So that's kind of the, the nice thing about bundle open is you actually get the version of the code that you're looking at. If you go look at stuff on GitHub, you're looking at the master branch usually by default, which may or may not have you know, the exact version of code that you're, that you're running. So bundle open, huge, awesome hack for just getting to the, where the code is. Uh, often I'll, I will just open GitHub. Um, you know, if, usually on GitHub, we don't want to look at the, the master branch. We want to look at the tagged release. So you go to the release tags and then view the code at whatever version you're looking at. Um, the, why do I find myself looking at code? Well, one thing is just to figure out what the methods do, especially when there's an, uh, a public facing API. So with mini test, one thing I've been looking at lately is the spec module. So mini test spec is a extension to mini test that makes it behave or look a bit more like our spec. And it's not a very long file. It's about 300 lines. And there's not that much documentation in mini test in general, but I mean, I could go look on Google, right? I could look up uh, other people's, you know, telling me how mini, mini test works, but they never explain the whole file. They don't explain everything what it does. They don't explain how it's implemented. And I could just read this file and say, all right, well, what in mini test spec, what does before do? Well, it just defines a setup method, which is how mini test works normally, but it calls super during the setup. Uh, so we could, we're going to, call up the method, the uh, chain. So like, I already know, okay, mini test spec works by creating this, this inheritance chain, which if you read more about mini test spec, that is actually how it works. Uh, we can learn about how all the methods are implemented, um, which gives you way more detail than docs essentially do. Um, so I love doing that. Another place I wish more people would do it would be for configuration. Um, as an example, Puma, uh, I probably can just bundle open Puma here because I'm sure, yeah, it's already a dependency. In Puma, we have a DSL file, which is how configuration works in Puma. So what, what are the config options available? Well, just go read them. Here's activate control app. I mean, we have docs on this, so you can read those too, but what, are the, what does that actually do? Uh, and sometimes we have a lot of config options that are not even documented or uh, are not documented very well. You can just read the code and like, well, enable request logging. Okay, well, that's true, but what does, what does request logging do? What does it look like? Well, I can just look at this and say, well, why don't I just look for this symbol across the code base? 
And then I'll sign, oh, it gets set in configuration.rb. It looks like right here. And it creates a new TCP logger with quiet. Oh, and if, if that option is on, we get a new common logger. So then I can go read the common logger class and see what that class does. So code can lead you to other areas of the code in ways that documentation doesn't. Um, so that's, that's kind of two quick reasons why I like reading code. Um, it's more accurate and more informative than documentation sometimes. And uh, you can learn, uh, especially with mini tests. Uh, Ryan, the author, has been writing Ruby for 20 years. You know, Puma, a lot of Puma's code is written by Evan uh, about 10 years ago. The C extension in Puma was written by Zed Shaw 15 years ago. Um, so there's a lot of group and, and you know, cultural knowledge embedded in code uh, in, a, in a way that documentation doesn't have. So go read more code. Uh, it's easy. And uh, I hope I've, I've encouraged you to go do it more often.